So how to apply to sit for the CPA exam? This is what, what I will explain in this video. Hey future CPAs, this is Ala Awadiya. I'm a licensed CPA in the state of Colorado and I help students pass the CPA exam and become CPAs. If this is your first time here and you're interested in becoming CPAs, start by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell in order not to miss any of my videos. A common question CPA exam candidates ask is how to apply to sit for the CPA exam? No doubt that the biggest obstacle to becoming a CPA is passing the uniform CPA exam. However, before you can even step your foot into the Prometric Center to take the exam, you must complete a detailed CPA exam application process. In this video, I will explain the a process you must follow to apply to sit for the CPA exam in seven simple steps. Step number one. Select the state you want to apply to based on your, your eligibility. It doesn't have to be the state that you currently live in. Pick a state that works for you. Do some research for the best state that works for you in terms of um, citizenship requirements, residency requirements, and education requirements to sit for the CPA exam. Each state is different and may have specific requirements you must fulfill. You can always transfer your credits later if you end up working in a different state, so don't worry about this point. Familiarize yourself with, the, with your jurisdiction's educational requirements to determine if you are eligible to apply as a first-time candidate. I also strongly advise you to read the candidate bulletin before submitting the application online. Go to nasba.org exams and then select the CPA exam and you'll find there like the CPA candidate bulletin uh, where you can download it and read it. It will help you understand everything about the exam in terms of how to apply the CPA exam, eligibility requirements, who manages the CPA exam, where to sit for the CPA exam, when to sit, um, what does an NCS look like, and a lot of other stuff. To learn the eligibility requirements to sit for the CPA exam, make sure to watch this video, which I explain those eligibility requirements. And to learn the difference between the sitting requirements and the licensing requirements, make sure also to watch this video, which I explain the difference between both requirements. And also, if you would like to learn um, the uh, specific educational and uh, other requirements to sit in specific states of the United States, I'm going to put here a playlist, which I explain like in different videos, um, the requirements for different states. Step number two. If you studied outside the United States, then you should send your credentials for evaluation. You will need to have an education evaluation service. Look over your academic record and translate it to see whether uh, you know it equals the U.S. system or not. The NASPA provides the service to candidates. So there is what, what we call the NASPA International Evaluation Service. So it evaluates them to see if they are equivalent to um, the U.S. education or not. And um, the NASPA International Evaluation Service, actually, it also is considered to be the only approved evaluation provider for some states. They only, they only approve the NASPA International Evaluation Service to do this uh, work for them. So make sure here to review your state requirements and see if your state accepts other evaluation providers or not. Usually it takes around six weeks for your evaluation to be ready. So go to NASPA.org and from there you're going to get all the details you want for the evaluation and how to, um, to do the evaluation process for your transcripts. Step number three. Apply to sit for your CPA exam through NASPA.org or through your state board of accountancy. There are some, some states that outsource all the application process to NASPA.org so you can do everything from NASPA and other states know that you should apply to the State Board of Accountancy and pay the fee to the State Board of Accountancy and then they will send your approval to NASPA.org. So basically go to www.naspa.org and once you go to the NASPA website you're gonna find here exams so go to CPA exam select CPA exam and um, under the CPA exam, you're going to find here um, 
they're gonna hear explain a bit about the exam what it is the candidate bulletin here's the candidate bulletin that i told you about where you'll get the information you need for the exam just to, you, you click it and then you download it and um, read it carefully um, you're gonna find a lot of st things here in the NASPA website it's a great website for the CPA exam it includes everything you want so here find that they say here candidates who apply for the CPA exam through one of the jurisdiction below that is in bold will apply using the CPA central NASPA's online application system so the ones here in bold are the ones that you can apply to um, through the NASPA website like for example Alaska CNMI Colorado um, Connecticut Delaware Florida Georgia Guam Hawaii and a lot of others here the ones in bold you can apply through the NASPA central now the ones that are not in bold once you click on them, they're gonna take you to. Um, they're gonna tell you, give you directions to go visit their state board of accountancy to apply through their state board of accountancy. So now let's let me show you the first how to apply through NASPA. Okay, so let's select for example here Alaska because it's in bold. You can apply through uh, the NASPA Central. So click on Alaska. What you have to do is just click on the state that you want, and then NASPA will direct you here to, for example, Alaska applying for the uniform CPA exam. They're gonna give you here exactly uh, specific instructions of what to do. And so you just here, what you want to do here is um, click on apply now. Okay, apply now. And once you um, select apply now, you're gonna reach to the CPA Central account here, then NASPA CPA Central. Okay. So what you want to do here is you want to register first because you're already you you don't you, you did not register yet for the exam, right? So. Um, here they're telling you do not submit your application for the exam until after your foreign education evaluation has been completed. So make sure that you send your evaluations, your transcripts for evaluation through the NASPA uh, International Evaluation Service or any other service. It depends on your state. So some states only accept the NASPA International Evaluation Service. So I'll show you also um, a bit later how to, uh, to do it on the NASPA from where you can find it on the NASPA website. But now let's show you how to um, apply through the CPA Central. So all you have to do is go to register here. So click register and then you're going to have to fill your information. So um, here they, they're telling you to jurisdiction in which you wish to apply. You must select the default jurisdiction to which you wish to apply for your CPA exam. So here it's Alaska because we selected Alaska from the beginning. And then here you're going to put miss or mister or miss or whatever the prefix and then the first name for example i'm going to put in my name here and the family name and then you're going to know go to um the suffix now that this one is it's not op it's an option so you don't have to put it but you must post your date of birth so here's for example my date of birth and then you're going to put your email address here's my email address and then confirm and then the number and then uh, choose your id and pass password so for example, here, I already filled my ID, whatever ID you want to put it and the passport, password. And then here, um, you wanna confirm um, the, pass, but the password, okay, to be ready. And then you're gonna enter, uh, enter a question that only you know the answer. So for example, here, put any answer you want, security question, any answer you want that, make sure to, to remember the answer because it will be used to, to log into your uh, NASPA Central account. Put here, I'm not a robot, and then, um, terms of privacy, I accept the terms of privacy, and then register. Here, what you have to do after you uh, fill the registration form and everything, okay, everything's okay, you're gonna log in. So you're gonna put your username and the password that you chose when registration and put log in. So here I put my user and my password and log in. So here, for if they're gonna tell you welcome, your exams, you currently have no exam information to display. Um, so here it's, you're gonna uh, enter it into your dashboard. So here there is apply online. To begin a new application as a first time or re-examination candidate, click the apply online link in the sidebar. So here you're gonna find everything you want. The eligibility requirements, they're gonna give you. What you need to do here is just go apply online. So click apply online. And then it's very simple. It's not that you know complicated. You're gonna answer all those questions. They're simple questions. So have you ever taken the uniform CPA exam as a candidate? candidate of any other state jurisdiction you're gonna put for example if no or yes if it's the first time you're gonna put no if it's yes gonna put if you did you're gonna put yes have you ever been denied permission to take the uniform civil exam no have you ever passed the entire examination you're gonna put no or yes depending on your situation have you ever been licensed as a cpa for example you're gonna put no if you're not licensed do you require testing accommodation in accordance with the disabilities it depends you're gonna put no or yes depending on your situation here i'm gonna put no other than study 
abroad program through a U.S. institution. Have you completed any, any of your education outside the U.S.? You're gonna you may put yes or no depending on your situation here. I'm gonna put yes because I studied outside the U.S. So you fill all those information. You're gonna put next, and once you put next, um, you're gonna here have um, you know fill some education questions about your degrees, bachelor, MBA, whatever it is. So put whatever is relevant to your situation, and then you're gonna have to put uh, your degrees, your major, uh, the number of semester credit hours. When did you decide to study for accounting? There are a couple of questions here about your education. So you should fill those questions based on your, on your situation. I'm not going to fill those questions now because they don't apply to me. But what I want to show you is a place where you're going to fill the sections. Okay. So here they're going to tell you, please select your exam sections here. So you're going to choose the sections that you are ready to sit for the exam, right? They, they tell you here explicitly that you are advised to only apply for a section of the examination if you are ready to take it within the next six months. So it's very important to apply to the sections that you are ready to take only. There's an application fee, which is a one-time payment you paid when you apply. And then you're going to get the total that you must pay. So that's how you apply. So you have basically, um, uh, you're going to fill an introduction and attestation of your information, the sections you want to apply to. Then you're going to get some application questions, some education questions, some demographic information, some school information. And then you're going to pay and then you're going to get the receipt. So everything you apply through the NASPA central website, okay? And so that's what I wanted just to show you this uh, quickly, the CPA central uh, website where you are going to apply everything through this website. And it's pretty simple and easy. It's not that complicated, right? So you just apply through this uh, website for the states that outsource their application to NASPA. You do everything through the NASPA central account. So this is basically how you apply through the NASPA central account. So here I'm going to show you another example for a state that you don't apply through uh, NASPA. So go to www.naspa.org, exams, CPA exam. And once you go to the CPA exam, you're going to go down here um, to the states. They're going to give you all the jurisdictions here. Now, as we mentioned before, the ones in bold are the ones that you apply through NASPA. And the ones that are not in bold are the ones that you should apply through your state board of accountancy. So here, for example, let's take, for example, Alabama. Alabama is the one is, is not in bold, so you must apply through um, the State Board of Accountancy. So once you click on Alabama through the NASPA website, NASPA will immediately direct you to uh, go to the website of Alabama. So how to apply for the Uniform CPA Examination, Alabama. Please visit the Alabama State Board of Public Accountancy website. So they already do it. They help you in that. They tell you to go to the website. And here's the link. You just click on the link here. And uh, it will take you to Alabama State Board of Public Accountancy. And here you're going to have to uh, do some research uh, based on your State Board of Accountancy. You're going to, like, I advise you to read a bit about the requirements, about the eligibility requirements. And you're going to look basically for the forms. So you're going to try to find the forms where the where the application forms are. So here I find here's the forms, for example, here. And here you're going to find, for example, um, online form, PDF form. Use this form if you pass the CPA exam. This does not apply to us here. We're looking for the CPA exam form. So here, if we go down here, there's here the CPA, the exam application. That's what we are looking for, the exam application, online exam application or exam application package PDF. So you can apply online. Here you're gonna have to, uh, you know, uh, I think register and do a username and a password and then just, you know, apply online. So here you're gonna have to log in. You're gonna have to set up an account and log, log in. Or you have another option, which is here, they give you an exam application package, a PDF package. So you would just apply, just click on it. And you're gonna find here that they give you instructions for CPA examination application, application forms. And here they give you detailed instructions of the fees, the initial application, the examination application, the four parts, the fees for those um, parts and the application fees. And here they're gonna give you all the details about everything you need and uh, the instructions. Basically, these are the instructions that you need to fill, fill. And here they give you the application for uniform CPA examination, the PDF form that you should fill for the initial application. So here you should put your name and some information about your address and personal information. And um, here are the fees. You select the exam, the parts that you want to sit for, that you want to pay for. And then you will fill, fill here the education requirements you need to do and some information, some questions about your education. And mainly these are the things that you should fill. And a United States citizen form because Alabama only 
accepts citizens. It does not accept international candidates, so you, you should fill this form. So basically, after you fill this form, you're going to fill it and um, sign it, and then I think pay the fee and submit it online to um, Alabama, and you'll be ready to... Uh, you, you should get the approval, the NTS from Alabama. They will, should, they will uh, you know, email it to you, and also they will email it to NASPA. So you will find you can reprint your NTS anytime from NASPA because all the State Board of Accountancies, they inform NASPA about um, your NTS and that you are eligible, which parts you are eligible to sit for. And they will also inform you based on the method you select, if you would like by mail or fax or whatever, they will inform me about your NTS. So basically, this is the method you can use for other states. Anytime once you receive your NTS, anytime you can go here to NASPA, the NASPA website, and you can reprint your NTS anytime from the NASPA website, even if it's, if you applied through NASPA or through your State Board of Accountancy, NASPA is the place where you can reprint your NTS anytime you want. Let me just show you here the uh, like where to find the NASPA International Evaluation Services. So you go here to exams, so you're going to go here to NASPA International Evaluation Services, click on it, and you will find here um, the place where you can um, uh, send your uh, uh, transcripts for evaluation. So welcome to the NASPA International Evaluation Services. Before you begin the application for an evaluation, visit the requirement page for a country-specific explanation. So you should go here to the requirements, and then uh, select the country where you live because each country has different requirements. So you select the country that you live based on For where example, you live. Let me select Jordan. Okay, so Jordan. Okay, For here they, they ask, they, they need the transcripts, the bachelor degree, the master's degree, and here's the application fee, copy of the passport, and a lot of other stuff here that we should, you know, submit. And there are here detailed, uh, uh, detailed uh, instructions and here you click on apply now where you should apply online and pay online and send your trans transcripts make sure to send the original ones they should be I think uh, sealed envelopes and stamped by your university so make sure to like read the instructions carefully and follow those instructions okay so this is the uh, mainly how to you know apply for the um, international evaluation services when filing your application make sure to spell your name on your application exactly the same as it appears on your identification you plan to take to the test center. The middle name, you can use an initial because when you go to the parametric center, they want to, they will check and make sure that your name exactly spells and the NTS exactly spells as it is in your passport or your ID, any ID that you are taking. So that is very, very important. Keep this in your mind. Step number four. Submit the necessary documentation. You will need to submit an official transcript from each school you attended to prove you have completed your education requirements. Transcripts will need to come from your school's register office. A paper copy may be mailed or an electronic version can be sent out for the registrar's office to um, e-transcript at naspa.org. Once you submit your CPA exam application, you have a deadline to send your transcript transcripts or your application will be denied and you will forfeit all fees paid. So make sure to submit all your um, transcripts directly to NASPA. The deadline varies by jurisdictions. So be sure to check the NASPA or your State Board of Accountancy to see this deadline. Now, if you are an international candidate who sent your um, transcripts for evaluation, I recommend you, you um, apply after you receive your evaluation. So usually the uh, evaluation provider will provide you with a copy of your evaluation and send the original evaluation to your State Board of Accountancy and to NASPA. So, to NASPA. So they will receive the original evaluation there. So I recommend you apply to your CPA exam after you receive your evaluation. Step number five. Pay your application and examination fees. There are two scenarios here. The first scenario is, um, in some cases, your Board of Accountancy will collect the application and examination fees. In this situation, you are required to pay your Board of Accountancy all fees associated with the examination at the time you apply. The fees you pay include an application fee charged by the Board of Accountancy and the examination fees. Each time you apply to take one or more sections of the exam, you must pay all fees directly to the Board of Accountancy. Once your application has been received, you may not be able to change the requested sections of the examination and you may be charged an additional fee 
for any changes. So make sure when you apply and fill the information that you are fully um, sure and confirmed that you will apply for those sections. After your Board of Accountancy has accepted your application and fees, it will not notify NASPA about which sections of the examination you are eligible to take. Your Board of Accountancy will inform you also of the application process timing and when to expect to receive your notice to schedule the MTS, which you will use to schedule your exams through Permetric. You will be asked to identify your preferred method for receive to receive your notice to schedule. Um, so uh, they will like give you options if you would like through the US Postal Service or the fax or the email. So you choose the best uh, way you want to receive your um, MTS. If you do not specify a preferred method, your MTS will be mailed to you. The second scenario when paying your examination fee and um, application fee is that the Board of Accountancy will collect only the application fee. So the second scenario is sometimes the board, some Board of Accountancy of Accountancy only collect the application fee and you will pay the examination fee separately to NASPA. In this situation, you are required to pay your Board of Accountancy only the application fee at the time you apply. Each time you apply to take one or more sections of the exam, you will pay the application fee to the Board of Accountancy. After your Board of Accountancy has accepted your application and fee, it will not notify NASPA as to which sections of the examination you are eligible to take. NASPA will then send you an authorization to test, an ATT authorization to test, and a payment coupon, which uh, will provide you with instructions on how to pay the examination fee. You should receive your MTS within three business days of paying your examination fee. Step number six, receive your notice to sit your to schedule for the exam. Once NASPA has determined you are eligible to take the CPA exam, you will receive an MTS or a notice to schedule. It can take up to eight weeks to process your application and determine your eligibility. But candidates are usually notified sooner, especially if they have previously applied to the exam. So it will be much more faster if you previously applied to the exam when you receive your NTS. Verify that the information listed is correct. If any of that information does not match your personal identification, Immediately, you must contact NASPA and uh, inform them that, about the difference. NTS has a section ID number. This number is used to identify you and the section you are sitting for. You will need this ID to schedule your exam date and time through Permetric to begin your exam on your test date and to retrieve your score once it is released by the AICPA. Step number seven. Schedule your exam date through Permetric. The CPA exam is administered, is administered at Prometric Testing Center. To schedule your exam, have your notice schedule handy and visit Prometric.com. You can choose the testing center most convenient for you by using the location tool provided during scheduling. The exam is typically not administered, not administered during the last month of every quarter. So be sure to plan accordingly. You can take any section of the exam. However, you may not sit for the same section more than once during any testing window. Uh, the new rules also in 2020, they allow you also to sit um, for the same section more than once during the same testing window. So if you fail the exam, you can sit in the same testing window, which is very it's excellent and it makes it much more easier, right? It is recommended that you schedule your exam early as time slots tend to fill up quickly. So the parametric centers are really, they're very crowded and they're tending up to fill up quickly, especially in the Middle East. Like I hear that um, Dubai uh, testing centers and Lebanon testing centers, they are filling up quickly. So make sure you guys to um, schedule early and plan accordingly. If you reschedule your exam date or time, you may be subject to reschedule fee. If you do not cancel or reschedule your exam five days before your exam and you fail to show up, you will forfeit all fees on your exam day. Make sure to bring with you the val a valid identification and not to forget to bring your notice to schedule to the test center. You will not be allowed to sit for the exam without your NTS. To be safe, plan to arrive at Prometric Center like uh, 30 minutes prior to your exam date. If you are late for your appointment, you may not be allowed to take the exam. So make sure to plan this uh, 
carefully and be careful and ready during the exam date. Being adequately prepared for your exam is the most important part of that process. So these are the steps that you must follow to um, apply and sit for the exam. Make sure to follow these steps carefully and remember, go after what you want. Pass the CPA exam because you can become CPAs and save.